In our next video here, we're going to talk a little bit more about the principal quantum number n. And of course, this is one of the four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, that define the structure of the electron around the nucleus of an atom. And here what we're going to do is we're going to relate it to the solutions of the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. Remember, an atom is a three-dimensional thing, and we can define it in spherical coordinates as a point away from the, from the nucleus, which is the radius, a point relative to the x-axis in angle away from the axis, and a point relative to the z-axis. So we have these two angles and the radius defining a point in space around the nucleus of an atom. When we throw those uh, spherical coordinates into the Schrodinger equation, we use it to solve for the uh, existence of an electron at particular locations. In this case, we're going to let n equals 1. So for n equals 1, we came up with the solution for theta, the solution for phi, and the solution for the radius. If we now multiply those three solutions together, we have what we call the wave equation for an electron in the innermost energy level when n equals 1, the principal quantum number, which then represents the innermost shell around the nucleus, which we call the K-shell. So, what does the equation look like? Well, it's a constant times e to the minus r over the Bohr radius, the radius that we assume the electron to be. So now what we're going to do here is realize since this is a constant, we can just write this as a constant times e to the minus r over a sub naught. Now, of course, in order to find where the electron will reside, we have to come up with the probability density function, which is simply the, the square of this wave equation. So if we square this, we get the constant squared times e to the minus 2 times r over a sub naught. Now, if we want to calculate the probability of finding the electron in a certain region around the nucleus, let's say there's the nucleus at the origin, and we want to find the electron in the shell region, a distance r away from the nucleus, in a shell of thickness dr, which is a very thin shell, how do we do that? Well, all we have to do is take the probability density function, which is the wave function squared, times the volume occupied by this little thin shell. And the way you find that volume is, of course, you think of it as a surface area times a certain thickness. The surface area will be 4 pi r squared because that's the surface area of a sphere. And we multiply times a small little thickness dr, and this will then give us the uh, function defining the probability of finding the electron in this particular region. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this density function right here, which is equal to, so we can then say um, that is equal to, uh, c squared e to the minus 2r over a sub naught, and we're going to multiply that times, of course, 4 pi r squared times dr. So that would be the probability of finding the electron in this little region of space around the nucleus. Now, to find out where the most likely place would be, what I'm going to do is we're going to take the derivative of that, so to find the maximum of anything, you take the derivative and set equal to zero. So we're going to take the derivative of this. Now we can probably get rid of the constants, the c squared, the 4 and the pi, let's go get rid of that because that will not change anything in the answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative, the d dr of what's left when we get rid of all the constants, which would be r squared times e to the minus 2r over a sub naught. And the dr, we can just simply think of that as a small little difference in the thickness, a small little delta r, so we can ignore that as well. So we're going to take the derivative of that and set equal to zero. What we find is that we take the derivative of this as a product, so it's the first, so this is the first, r squared, times the derivative of this, which is e to the minus 2, oop, I said 2, but I wrote r. I do that more often. Let's get rid of that. So e to the minus 2r over a sub naught times the derivative of the nucleus, uh, I should say the derivative of the exponent, which is equal to minus 2 um, over a sub naught, because that's the derivative of the exponent, plus, see here, we take the second part, which is e to the minus 2r over a sub naught, times the derivative of the first part, which is times 2r. Okay, so what we've done so far is we took the probability of finding the electron in that little thin shell right here. Now we took the derivative of that and to find the maximum, where the maximum probability is, we're going to take that and set it equal to zero. So we're going to set 
the p prime equal to zero. So the derivative equal to zero. That's an old mathematics trick to find the maximum value of something. So we're going to set this whole thing equal to zero right here. And of course, then to solve for r, what is the value for r that will give us the most likelihood of finding the electron? Let's go ahead and factor out what's common. So we have an r squared here and an r, so we can factor out an r. We have a 2 here and a 2, we can factor out a 2. We have an e to the minus 2r over a sub naught. So let's factor those out. So we have 2r times e to the minus 2r over a sub naught. And what do we have left over here? Let's see here. We have that, that, we have an r left over here, and a minus and an a sub naught. So minus r over a sub naught. That's left in the, from the first term. And from the second term, uh, let's see here. We have 2r, that's all factored out. e sub naught, all that. So we have left plus 1. And that will be equal to 0. All right, so that means that either this part is equal to 0 or this part is equal to 0. Because when we multiply two things together and we get 0, that means one or the other should equal 0. Now, if this equals 0, that means r equals 0. And so therefore, that's not a good solution. That's this point right here. And so that's probably where we have the minimum probability of finding the electron. So that's not what we want. We want the maximum to find the max. So we'll ignore this part right here. So then we concentrate on this part of the equation. So let's set that equal to zero. And that should then probably find, give us the location where the electron will reach a maximum. So when we do that, we get minus r over a sub naught equals one. And if we then cross multiply, uh, oh, oh, I'm jumping the gun here. I'm sorry, jumping the gun, plus one equals zero. If we now move the one across, and I need a little bit more room, so let me move over here. If we now move the one across, we have minus r over a sub naught equals minus one. Cross multiply, we get minus r equals minus a sub naught, or r equals a sub naught. So there's a solution. What's the most likely place to find the electron around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom? Well, it turns out it's at the radius equal to a sub naught. And of course, we have a sub naught defined as the radius of the hydrogen atom, which shows that the Schrodinger equation supports the idea that the size of the electron is defined by the quantum numbers. And when n equals 1 in the innermost energy state, you can see that the radius is exactly equal to the Bohr radius of the atom for hydrogen. So that's pretty neat. And there we go. That's the definition of the state, energy state that the electron is in when n equals 1. That's the, called the principal quantum number.